Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what I'm going to be covering is a community voted for video which is the login screen and I have a couple examples set up that you can basically use. One is to restrict access to inventories for blocks and the other one is basically to trick people or troll them I guess and some other advanced mechanics. So one is through a block obviously and the other one is just through a command so I'll cover how that all works. The login screen is just a generic login screen. It's just two text fields, a confirmation button that will basically test if the variables in these particular fields are correct to what is stored in the block or on the database and if that's true then it will do, do something obviously a little bit further. So if we right click on here and we just go and type in Steve and maybe a random password, then it will say wrong username because I have only one username set up. So if we go with North, West, Trees. Now this can be a variable name as well. You can store this to a player if you want. So this can be as dynamic as you want it. I'll explain how to do that later and say we go one two three four for a password then it will say wrong password because that's obviously the wrong one all right so north west trees and then if we type the right password in it will access the inventory so we could grab a boat and swim across but rather than do that i rather just use the other command so now you guys kind of understand how the basic login screen works log in and then we can type the same password and login information north west whoop, west is case sensitive west trees and then one two three four five and then we'll get a gui that we can basically use we'll say okay op mode spawn diamonds and then we'll spawn some tnt behind us and then we can go flying over the entire ocean. It brings us way past 600 feet or meters onto the other side. So, yeah. <laughs> I thought that would be a little cool ex example. It also um, does block damage, so as you can see there, there's a few of my test holes for uh, explosions. So, yeah, outside of that, let's hop into M and I'll show you how it all works. All right, so there is a lot to cover in this particular video, so it's gonna be a little bit lengthy. I'm gonna try my best to keep it short. The There's a lot going on in this particular procedure and setup, so I'm going to just cover the login screen, the login button, and I'm gonna skip over the command really. We don't really need to do that today's video. This is gonna be like a maybe couple part series. And we're also going to look at how to set a global or actual procedure. Now, the reason why it's so long is because there's a lot going on in the mod itself. And I know that people are going to want different login screens for different things. And that's where it's going to get tricky because you kind of adapt your login screen around what you need. So I'm going to first show how to do a login screen for just a basic open a GUI and then basically get the credentials and then all that stuff. And then in another video, I'll cover blocks and stuff like that. Let's start with the login screen. Our login screen consists of a text field, text field, and a login button. So in order to get the username, what we're doing is we're testing for our username in the top field, our password in the lower field, and then we're going to be testing if both both text fields equal something of the user that is stored somewhere. So this can be done through a block, this can be done through an item, whatever you want. It can be really dynamic on how you basically set it up. But the main thing that you need to worry about is what you're gonna be setting your text input name. This could be any particular name, but make sure that it's easy to remember so you can basically use it in your procedure because that's the name that you're going to be using for your username 
text field and this is the name that you're going to be using for your password text field for the login button all we're doing is we're going to the login button procedure so let's go and take a look at the login button procedure all right so the text field is a little bit easier to understand than most of the other things that i'll be covering in the future this is why i'm starting with the actual GUI screens and stuff like that. So you can basically limit access to GUI screens. The reason for that is it's a lot easier to cover and I'll explain how to do it for blocks and items in the future, but uh, right now we're just gonna be covering that. Uh, one thing to note is we have a couple global variables. The first thing that we need to do is actually assign the variable to that player. So for example, I've set my mod ID password and my mod ID username as a string variable and it's for player persistent for the type of variable as well as it's blank. Now what we want to do is go back to our button and what we want to do is test for a couple of things. A very basic setup, you're gonna test for the text inside the text field is equal to the global variable for the username and password. And if it's false on either one of these, what you wanna do is basically close the GUI and output a message for the user so they know what's what the issue is. So for the first one, it's basically testing for the username. Basically, if the credentials are wrong, then basically what I've done is I've just outputted a message saying that the, the wrong user username. Same thing for the password. And if both are true, then what I've done is I've basically opened up the user screen. Another thing that you might want to do just to enable a little bit extra security is because they're spawning with no password, you may want to set test if the for another condition for both of these. For example, if we add a and statement and then go to external inputs, so it's like that, we can basically drop that like that. And then what we're going to do is also test if the text field name is not blank. So for example, uh, we're going to go and we're going to set just a blank character like that. So you would do that for both your password and username if you wanted to. I will leave that up to you how you want to do it, but that's basically just a way that I would probably want it to do it just to ensure that people don't have quick access to the login screen with no password or username. So how to build this? Uh, that's pretty simple. All we need to go and do is go to our logic pardon me, flow control and grab two of these statements, which is the general if statement and an else statement. If you have a regular if statement, you can customize it by clicking on the gear icon and just dragging an else statement to your main if statement. And we're gonna duplicate that two times and put the, the other if statement into the actual main condition that returns true. So the next thing that we need to do is test for an and condition. So we're gonna go to our logic grab an and, we're going to then set this to and, and then go to internal inputs, and we're gonna duplicate that twice because we need to test for both. Next thing that we need to do is test for our actual strings. So we're going to go back to logic, get a green operator, and we're gonna duplicate this twice, and then what we're going to do, actually four times, so like this, and then what we're going to do is go to our GUI, slot in GUI procedures, get text field, text inside text field, and then the name needs to be the same as your text field name. So username, and we're going to duplicate that and place that down here as well. Next, what we need to do is get our global variables. So we're gonna to go to custom variables, get global variable, and we're gonna set this to our username one. And then we're going to go to text and then get a blank text. And that will be our first condition. Now to make it simple, what we can do is just delete that and duplicate that and set our password. So that, this, and then what we're going to do is set our password variable. All right, so now that we have that all done, we can move on to our main body of our procedure. So we need to get the player, or set the player's basically GUI screen. So we're going to go to player procedures, open screen four, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go and open our user screen. And that's all that you really need to do. If you want to have message output, basically list what's going on, what's wrong. 
then you can use these else statements. Uh, if you don't want to use that, you can just remove the else statement and disable that. If you want it, then keep it. Under the conditions that you want it, uh, you want to go to player procedures and then go to close any GUI, open GUI. And you're just going to drop that on both of these so it kicks them out of the actual GUI. And then what we need to do is set a message to the player. So we're going to scroll down until we see set message to player. And we're going to just say wrong password and we're going to do wrong username for this one so it's like so all right so so that's basically how it's all set up uh it's very simple to do now let's move on to the setting the variables so we actually need a, another gui screen for that and what we're going to do is we're going to go to login, set login screen, and then we're going to basically get our two text fields. For example, what we need is we need to set our username and set password. I've just used the same username and password text field names as well as direct our button, set login to set login button. So now that we know what we're doing here, uh, we can go to our set login button and this is what's happening here. So what we're doing is we're going to basically test if the text field in the set login screen is not equal to password is not equal to blank and the user name is not equal to blank. If that is true, then what we're doing is we're passing it to a local variable. This is important because if you try just dropping the text field name onto the global variable, then it basically creates an error. So we need to pass it to a local variable and then to pass the local variable onto the global variable like so. So you need two string variables, string, and then give it any name, one for your password, one for your username. Lastly, what you need to do is basically, if these conditions are true, then what you want to do is just close the GUI and that will kind of give you a very basic indicator that password has been set so we can just close GUI after. So to create this what we need is just one if statement, a regular if statement, go to flow control, drop this down here, grab an ands operator, so like that, regular operator, and, and then we're going to set it like that. Then we're going to grab two not statements, and then we're going to grab a green operator for text, and then we're gonna to go to our slot GUI input and we're gonna drop this down here. We're gonna set this to our password. And then we want to go to text, grab a empty blank text field and then we're going to just set this to username. And that's our main condition out of the way. The next thing that we need to do is set our local variables. So we're going to set local variable password, set local variable username, and we're going to set that to our text field password and text field username. After that, what we need to do is set our global password. So global password and global username. So what we're doing for that is we're just going to get our local password and get local username. And then what we need to do is just go to player procedures, close GUI, and that'll be over and done with. The final thing that we need to do is actually create a command to access this particular screen. So you can run it through any type of procedure or element that you want, but I've set a simple login screen. Uh, the reason for this is because one, we can actually set our login password, and two, we can also use the command for basically opening this screen as well. So for login, I just have the password set to login, the or the actual command is run through here. So this is very simple to set it up. Uh, if the We're basically testing if the login slash login that will go to our lock screen. If it's not if it has an extra condition after it, which is equal to set, then what we're doing is login set and then it'll open up the set login information screen. So to do this, what we need to do is go to a flow control, grab a general if statement, make sure that it has an else statement attached. And then what we want to do is we want to go to our logic, get a text, and then we're going to go and grab command parameter. We're going to leave this at zero. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to get some text and then we're going to set this to what we're looking for when they're typing the command. So in our case, we have set it to test or pardon me, set. And then what we need to do is go to player procedures and scroll down until we see open screen. And then we're going to have our lock screen for our base one. So if this is not true, if there's no extra command after it, then what we're going to do is just open our lock screen just for the regular slash login. And then if you want to actually set your password, it'll be login or slash login set. So this will be our log set login screen. And that's all there is to the actual command. Um, hopefully you guys found today's tutorial useful. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below. I'll provide the workspace and everything on my website in, and in the description so you can go to my website and then download it from my Google Documents. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.